protect me and have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my lowliness, suffering. Take away all my sin, all my sins, my God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. The word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Remind people of these things and charge them before God to stop disputing about words. This serves no useful purpose since it harms those who listen. Be eager to present yourself as acceptable to God, a workman that causes no disgrace, imparting the word of truth without deviation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him, and his covenant for their instruction. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than He. And to love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that He answered with understanding, He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's something beautiful about the scribe. A lot of times we think of the scribes, we think of the Pharisees, and they're usually very hard-hearted. They usually already have an agenda, already are convinced of their own righteousness, and so they then look through that lens to understand Jesus' actions not being able to really see what Jesus is saying through his actions, because they have a certain filter. They, in a sense, have an echo chamber. I was thinking of this recently, this idea of the danger when objective truth, that is, truth that doesn't start with us, but is out here, and regardless of what we think or not, that's true. We call that objective truth. And there are certain currents of thought that would look at that objective truth and say, we need to banish that because it takes away our freedom. It takes away our wider vision because we have to submit in obedience to a higher power, another something. And we call that God. But when that objective truth is called into question or just kind of pushed away, then what do we have left? We have something very personal, something that dwells here, and we call that experience. Experience is a very good thing. It's needed. If we also believe that there's objective truth, the moment that that truth is sort of denied, all we have to fall back on is our own experience. And unfortunately, what happens when we combine truth starting here, and experience already starts here, you put the two of those together and your experience is your truth. And unfortunately, what happens in that kind of situation is you don't have a wider vision of reality, but you become an echo chamber because there is a personal attack if your truth 
is somehow called into question. And so what you do is you surround yourself with others who have the very same experience as you, or the way that they're interpreting that experience, and you just kind of create your own little world. And the danger of that is because truth now becomes so personal and so experiential, and it's just here versus out there, these little pods start to be created, and they are closed in on themselves as a, protect, as a protection of safeguarding whatever that truth is that they're holding on to, regardless of whether there's something out here that all parties are called to wrestle with and struggle and and you know, even have their own walls broken down so that they can be able to experience that truth out there. But what happens is you have these little pods of what we would call narcissism. And in many ways, uh, social media actually fuels this. Because social media, unfortunately, now is becoming something that is very much instantaneous and it appeals to sort of that, that passion that's there, but sort of bypassing reason a lot of times. There's a pressure to sort of jump into something without having the time to stop, pray, wait, and then respond. You've noticed, especially in these times right now, there's just this, um, it's very tiring in many ways, just this kind of um, jumping here, jumping here, jumping here. And we see this in the situation of the unrest that's with us socially. We see this in the debates within the church. We see these all these different things, and it's sort of like you don't have the time to stop and think because you just sort of... And unfortunately, because you don't have time to stop and think, you in a sense are continually just validating yourself with whatever experiences that you've had. You just surround yourself with that kind of social media footage, those kind of things, and you just kind of create your own little echo chamber. And in doing that, we just become totally different worlds and we lose the ability of seeking truth together. And that comes through dialogue, that comes through learning how to be humble, how to listen to the other, how to be able to sort of have a healthy self-doubt in a way of saying, how am I part of the problem? Can I step back and sort of look and see, I'm fallen, I'm a sinner, so where am I needing to grow? Where am I needing to recognize maybe an area in which I'm just sort of cycling around my own echo chamber, and it's very comfortable there, but how do I actually in search of the truth, break out of the echo chamber and learn to listen to others, especially those who are on opposite sides. And it does not necessarily mean to just say, well, I have to agree with everything. That's the dangerous thing here. Is it's sort of like there isn't an area to sort of, in a healthy way, dialogue and be able to work together towards the one truth but because of these kind of camps are forming and they're getting stronger and more isolated, there's this way in which it's sort of like it's all or nothing. And you don't have time again to sort of think and say, well, I do agree with this, but I think this falls short here. Because on both sides, there's this idea of if you have any 
criticism of anything that's within my echo chamber, then you are the enemy. You are anathema. And I will not listen. And when that happens, you don't have the ability to really listen to one another. And the only way, when truth is this subjective echo chamber here, the only way to, in a sense, continue to validate your truth is to pretend that the other one doesn't exist or to vilify and say that there is no redeeming value whatsoever in anything that they say. And then the cycle just continues. And ultimately, it starts bubbling over until you can't stand that other side in such a way that you say, well, I have to just destroy that side in one way or another. And then my truth will be validated as the truth. But do you see how in neither of these areas are we actually having the humility to search for the one who is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life? So, looking at the gospel today, we have the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This vertical commandment of loving God with everything. There is the horizontal commandment of loving your neighbor as yourself. You can't, you can't love your neighbor unless you really, really get to know them as you know yourself, to have that, that empathy, to enter into their shoes, to be able to, the best of your experience, to be able to be able to say, I don't, I don't fully know my neighbor, and I need to first, before making a judgment towards them, I need to really enter into their world and listen and walk. This is this whole image of Pope Francis with this accompaniment. It really deals with this aspect of how do we love our neighbor as ourselves if we don't really know them on that deeper level as ourselves. But what I see here is the scribe here is someone who had courage to approach Jesus, not in an echo chamber to defeat Jesus, but to say, I want to understand. Notice how the Lord says, Jesus saw that he answered with understanding. Because the scribe doesn't do what all the other scribes do, is to become hardened, even in the midst of miracles, even in the midst of teaching, they get hardened saying that they just want to destroy Jesus more and more because he's threatening their truth that they're holding on to. But this scribe actually has the courage to say, well said, teacher. I hadn't thought of it this way before, but I see that in order to love God, I have to be willing to love my neighbor as myself. And in order to really love my neighbor as myself, I have to be able to be focused on God. Because this is where the two aspects of our Christian faith are. We can't live out social justice without focusing on the Lord or else it becomes something that spirals into another form of narcissism. But we also can't love God without being passionate about the issues of social justice in our time. We can't say, I love you, God, and then turn our back on our neighbor. So, we need to, each one of us, just examine our heart and see where is the echo chamber. And maybe what I would encourage you to do is even look at your social media. 
and see what are the sites that you're surrounding yourself with? And are there any that also show the other side the way that they see that other side? Because then that helps to be able to recognize are there valid points and where can we work together to seek he who is the way, the truth, and the life. So, where is your heart and echo chamber? I'm looking at this in my own life as well. And one of the beautiful things about our faith is that the social teaching of our church is so wide and vast, and like I said before, it doesn't fall into a political party. It doesn't fall into sort of a human way of thinking. It looks at everything and says, how do we love in all of these circumstances? And how do we find mercy and justice being blended together as the same word? Because Jesus Christ is both mercy itself and justice, faithfulness together in his love for you. Here's our prayers. Here's the prayers of all who call upon his name. Let us bring our prayers before him. For our church, may the Holy Spirit help us in never ceasing to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all the corners of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may God write upon their hearts the first of all commandments as they guide their people in their daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prisoners, for persons incarcerated wrongly, and political prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, especially those who experience doubts, the Lord's grace and kindle hearts of steadfastness and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they soon meet God face to face and live in his kingdom forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all those who are affected by COVID-19, these are the ones that I've been asked to offer this Mass for, for protection and strength for each one of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for wisdom, peace, reconciliation, the spirit of unity in the midst of our country right now, that we might have the ability reach out to listen, to walk towards Jesus Christ, who is the truth, that he might lead us to a true reform, a true dealing with areas of injustice and racial discrimination in a way that builds everyone up and makes one another neighbor to each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box, for all the prayers within your heart. We pray for the Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God of mercy and justice, you have shown us that you will honor all covenants and keep all promises. Hear the prayers we lift to you today. Through Christ our Lord.
blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of the offering. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus del Salvador,
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, and Richard our administrator, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in you, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray of every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. On this day, which holy is the Catamundi, Misericordies. On this day, which holy is the Catamundi, Misericordies. On this day, which holy is the Catamundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I call. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. Let us pray that an act of 
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I truly believe that you are present in the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen.
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.